What we learned about the depth, thickness, and extent of the Mount Simon Aquifer and overlying layers helped us get a better picture of where it is likely to be recharged with water. If we took a deep slice of the earth beneath the Twin Cities metropolitan area, we'd see different geologic layers. The thickness of the layers in this cross-section figure is exaggerated to show them more distinctly. This cross-section represents an area about 60 miles wide and about 1,000 feet deep, or a fifth of a mile. The geologic layers fall into four general categories. Loose, unconsolidated layers of sand, gravel, silt, and clay. This top layer, which is hundreds of feet thick, is often a stack of repeating fine grain layers with high amounts of silt and clay and coarse grain layers of sand and gravel sandwiched in between. Where there are more sand and gravel layers, rain and melted snow soak through quickly. Where there is mostly clay and silt, surface water moves downward slowly. Bedrock layers of porous sandstone and limestone will hold water and let it move through. These layers are water-bearing aquifers. Bedrock layers of shale and siltstone aren't permeable to water, so they serve as barriers to water moving downward. These barriers, also known as aquitards, trap the water in porous layers above. And at the bottom, there is an impermeable layer of solid bedrock, such as granite or basalt, which are also aquitards that block water movement. To illustrate key groundwater recharge areas at the western edge of the Mount Simon Aquifer, we've made a simulated flyover. These edges are important because surface water that seeps into the ground in these areas flows to the Mount Simon Aquifer. On this image, the extent of the Mount Simon Aquifer is shown in blue, with outlines of Minnesota counties shown in green. Although not shown on this image, the aquifer extends into neighboring Wisconsin to the east and Iowa to the south. The area between the pink line, which is the western and northern edge of the Mount Simon Aquifer, and the brown line is the recharge edge of the aquifer. The dots show the locations of monitoring well clusters, or nests, that were installed by the project. The black lines illustrate locations of geologic cross-sections that we will show after we fly closer to the ground surface. This southern cross-section is typical of the Mount Simon Aquifer from the Iowa border to the eastern portion of Wright County. In this area, the western edge of the aquifer on the left is covered by 300 to 500 feet of fine grain sediment that allows only very slow penetration of water from the surface. Moving easterly, the Mount Simon Aquifer is covered by other aquifers and aquitards that prevent water from seeping down to it. In the southern part of the study area, the carbon-14 test results showed that the water had been in the aquifer for 7,000 to 8,000 years. That translates to a recharge rate of about three-quarters of an inch per year, or about the rate your fingernails grow. However, over this large area, even the slow recharge rate is important for refilling the aquifer in the area near Mankato, St. James, and Lake Crystal. Other groundwater in this area has been underground from 10,000 to 30,000 years. The northern cross-section view is much different in the northwestern area of the metropolitan area. There are two notable changes in the underlying geology north of the Minnesota River in Wright, Sherburn, and Isanti counties. The western edge of the Mount Simon Aquifer is much shallower, 100 to 200 feet below the surface. The western shallow edge of the aquifer is covered by porous sand and gravel that allows water to pass easily into the Mount Simon Aquifer in some locations. To the east, hundreds of feet of aquifers and aquitards separate the Mount Simon Aquifer from any surface water to the east in the center of the metropolitan area. In the northern part of the aquifer, the age of the Mount Simon Aquifer water is a much different story. Here the carbon-14 tests and previous test data showed groundwater ages of 300 to 1,000 years. Looking at water chemistry, we obtained evidence of the rate at which rain and snowmelt percolate into the aquifer. The Mount Simon Aquifer groundwater samples that we collected for the project in this area did not contain tritium, but if we look at the full tritium data set, including samples collected by the Minnesota Department of Health, 
we find a high proportion of tritium detections. So some modern water is penetrating to the top of the Mount Simon Aquifer. When this new information is added to previous studies, it's even more clear that this area northwest of the Twin Cities is the only place where rain and melting snow can recharge the Mount Simon Aquifer within the span of a human lifetime. Shown in a cross-section with ages indicated, you can see how groundwater has traveled for at least 10,000 years to the aquifer that's now beneath the Twin Cities metropolitan area. In this simulated flyover of the northwestern recharge edge in the Wright, Sherburn, and Isanti County area, we can see the mix of land use types. According to a 2006 national land cover data set, this region is comprised of approximately 30% cultivated crops, 24% forest, 22% pasture and grassland, 15% wetlands and open water, and 8% urban development. This land use mix and the geology of the area are good news for the replenishment and recharge of the Mount Simon Aquifer. The area is characterized by relatively low percentages of impervious surfaces associated with urban development. And our geologic analysis of the area suggests the groundwater recharge pathways shown in the cross sections may be common occurrences. But along with at least a moderate capacity for groundwater recharge, there is the issue of pollution sensitivity to consider and include in land use planning. The bad news is, if communities in the area aren't careful about what they do at the surface, they risk polluting a major water supply aquifer with water that was contaminated near the surface. The geologic atlases that are planned for two of the three counties in this area will help local units of government and state agencies with these issues. Mapping the third type of data we collected, aquifer water levels, we were able to see how use of the Mount Simon groundwater is affecting the levels of water in the aquifer. When a well pumps water from an aquifer, the water level near the well lowers in the shape of a cone and water in the aquifer flows toward this low spot. When there are multiple wells pumping, a regional zone of lower groundwater levels can form. This downward trend in groundwater levels is also shown in data that has been collected in Scott County since 1984. When water levels are mapped from many wells like this, the depression in water levels can be seen on paper or in three dimensions. In this animation, the water levels in the aquifer, represented here as elevations, are shown with this three-dimensional surface. The greenish areas represent the higher water levels, while the reddish areas show the lower levels. Over the past 30 to 40 years, we have seen a decrease in water levels toward the center of the St. Paul and Minneapolis area. In pre-settlement times, the water level surface of the Mount Simon Aquifer probably looked like a smooth version of the land surface, similar to the surface shown here. But over time, the lower groundwater levels beneath the Twin Cities are the result of continuous high volume pumping by dozens of production wells in the metropolitan area for municipal and industrial use. Groundwater levels in the center of this zone of depression have dropped more than 200 feet since the time that European development started in this area. The blue circles shown in this view show the locations of the Mount Simon groundwater users and the size of the circles is proportional to the amount of groundwater used per year. In 2010, the combined use of Mount Simon groundwater was 14 billion gallons per year in this area. 75% of this use is by municipal waterworks, followed by 16% industrial processing, including petroleum, chemical, and agricultural uses. The Mount Simon Aquifer has provided a water supply for an ever-growing metropolitan population for generations. Today, many of the communities in the Levin County area are dependent on this water supply, and demands for groundwater from it continue to increase. One outcome of this study is that we now have a network of observation wells along the important and vulnerable recharge areas at the western and northwestern edge of the Mount Simon Aquifer. These wells will serve in the future to evaluate the effects of ongoing pumping from the aquifer. These new data will help community leaders respond to two concerns for this major water supply aquifer, protecting the resource from pollution and conserving it for future generations.
Regarding resource protection, the study results have identified key areas within certain counties that play essential roles for replenishing water to the Mount Simon Aquifer. Northeastern Wright County, Eastern Sherburne County, and Southern Isanti County. Because we now know how important these water recharge areas are for the Mount Simon Aquifer, protecting them from water pollution should be a high priority for all levels of government. To assist local governments, maps of pollution-sensitive areas for important aquifers are included in county geologic atlases. These atlases are produced by the Minnesota DNR and the Minnesota Geological Survey. Atlases for Wright and Sherburne counties are now in progress, and there is hope that Isanti County will also participate. This study shows that protection of groundwater resources in between Buffalo and Cambridge are important to the water supply for the local community and the Twin Cities metropolitan area. Regarding resource conservation, this study has added new water level data to a much larger picture created by the U.S. Geological Survey research. This research has shown that in the Twin Cities area, we are pumping groundwater out of the Mount Simon Aquifer faster than it can be replenished. More work is needed to better compare the amount of water moving into the aquifer to the amount being taken out. This will help us understand how much pumping is sustainable for household and business use without depleting groundwater supplies. Our long-term economic vitality depends on an adequate supply of high-quality water. We need to take steps to protect this aquifer from pollution and overuse so it's available for future generations.